Welcome back to the Hyper Motard restoration. You remember that Ducati Hyper Motard I bought two and a half years ago and I've only ridden it twice? <laughs> well, welcome back to, I think, episode 13 of the restoration. Now, this isn't maybe the episode you may have been wanting, but this is an update nonetheless. So in this episode, when we left last time, we stripped, I went up to see Nelly Desmo works and we stripped the engine and I was left with the casings. Now the reason for stripping the engine completely was because I wanted to get those casings painted. Well, Adam, my A1 painted powder coating, has pulled it out of the bag and he's now finished painting the casings. Have a look at these. Here are the casings. <laughs> As you can see, all painted. I've gone for the uh, cobalt grey on the casing. So, we did that and then uh, I shared some of the pictures with Cerakote UK and they said, hold on guys, do you want to come up to our headquarters and we'll talk you through the whole Cerakoting process because I've had loads of questions about Cerakote, you know, what are its uses, why have I gone for Cerakote on the casings themselves? So I thought, yeah, why not? So in this video, we're popping up to Cerakote UK, me and Adam, um, and they, I've actually, <laughs> I was a bit cheeky, I've taken my rear sets to be painted. So we're following the process of painting my rear sets. So uh, grab yourself a coffee, make yourself comfortable. Come and see all about this Cerakote process in detail. Chopsy, roll the intro. Cerakote UK and we've got with us Simon and Nemo. Yep. This is the Cerakote UK headquarters. Yeah, so we're the, uh, we're the UK distributor. Um, we look after all of our applicators, customers, customer service, customer support. Um, but our main goal here is um, to provide a very good quality distribution service, yeah. um, technical support, because we know that Cerakote is a niche product. Yeah. So we know that naturally it needs a very good support with it. Um, but also, we, we're here in our training room today, so this is going to be the other big push for us this year, um, is to develop our certified network. So what we're going to do, because Cerakote's quite a new coating, isn't it? A lot of people, and I've been using it on the bikes, if you've been following the channel, you've seen Adam's here as well from A1 Powder Coating. Adam, come on, just oh, say hello. Hiding behind the camera. <laughs> Got to see him, you've heard about him. <laughs> this is on. Adam, he's done all the painting right? <laughs> on the uh, 690, the cases, the new cases on the Ducati. So. Just want to sort of go through the process a little bit, make mm. people aware of it, what you can and can't use it for, and why it's really good for bike applications, yeah. really. So I've been rather cheeky, and I've actually bought the uh, the rear sets from the Ducati. Yeah, the, these are Sato rear sets, but they're Stunning. the shiny version they do, and I don't think they're going to be in keeping now for what I want to do with the bike. So not, we're not going to do them all, but what we're going to do is follow the process of these. So first step, this is... Degreasing tank, yeah. yeah. Um, so we pop them in there, let them soak. Um, get all of that grime and anything. I mean, they're stunning right, anyway, yeah, but we're going to yeah. chuck them in. Chuck them um, in. Let them soak for a little while. And then we'll come back to them in a second. It's now the next day. We've had the full, <laughs> we've had the full 24 hour soak. <laughs> we're in the same clothes. Dirty <laughs> yeah, bastards. <laughs> so this is the blasting uh, tank. Tank or cabinet, cabinet, yeah. Cabinet, cabinet. So we've got here our wonderful uh, Vixen VM55. We love it. Um, we She's know that beauty. there's lots of different variations of blast cabinets, but we just, this Vixen thing is just unreal. <laughs> this um, is, this it it runs one. on a pressure pot system um, with a separate cyclone and, and dust cabinet. So it, yeah. it, it works extremely efficiently. Um, and it just, go, it just gives our um, trainees a, a chance to use something which is yeah. maybe of like a higher end, um, just to see what you can do. But what we've got, we've got Nemo who's going to pop your small bits in our little shake and blast canister. So nuts and bolts, oh, okay. super easy. Yeah. Um, pop the blast nozzle in the end. And you've also got your rear set in there. Um, because we're working with a, a, a raw aluminium, we haven't got to remove any, um, any existing paint or existing finishes. Yeah. Um, we can drop the pressure. 30, 40 PSI is about average. Um, that, that means we're not going to, one, we're not going to smash our blast media to pieces um, and use it prematurely. Um, and it means that we're still going to be able to obtain a nice, really nice blast profile. And what's the, and what's the media you said? It's uh, aluminium? It's aluminium oxide. Aluminium oxide. Yeah. Pay attention, people. It's going to be a test at the end. <laughs> Nemo's going to try and achieve a very even, very smooth, matted uh, blast profile. This is going to be critical for the final finish. Last 
frosted, matted finish now. That shiny finish is gone. So they're now ready for the paint process now. Is gassing out. Yeah, we gas them out, yeah. What, just uh, blow out any particles that no, might so, be left in there? So what we do is we make sure um, prior to coating, because we're going we're gonna to cure those in after the coating process, we want to make sure that that's not going to you know, leach any contaminants or, right. or any moisture. Um, so we literally pop it in the oven, um, give it half an hour um, at whatever our cure temp is going to be. Uh, and then hopefully they're not going to, I can't see them being any issues because they're CNC billet. Um, but yeah, normally if you have like a, um, with bikes, you have like a casting, like a clutch casing, something that's been submerged in oil all its life, it's really quite important to, to make sure that you follow that gas out procedure. Um, just because the last thing you want is to coat something, it looks fantastic. Um, you pop it in the oven, you bring it out and it's leached some oil or that's just going to ruin it. And we have to go back to square one. Into the oven for half an hour. There's Adam, there he is, there's the man. Hey, the man. Hey, one powder coat in, there Perfect. he is. Sweet. So now we've got the exciting stuff of colours, you know, what, what colours to go for. And we've got all these uh, choices. <laughs> I think oh. that one's a bit unusual. Well, the pink. Yeah. So are these all the same series? These are all the series we can use? That's right, yeah. So what we've got there, we've got, um, that's now our compiled hate series colour set. Um, we've got over 130 colours now. Uh, and it's yeah. conti continually growing. We've come out with some wonderful funky colours. There's straight colours, metallic colours, obviously very much a nod to, to camouflage, you'll see. Um, but yeah, it's yeah, amazing colours, um, which when you think all of this from a sort of 25 to 50 micron film thickness coating, which can adhere to pretty much anything, um, yeah, it's very multi substrate So to be able to have that colour range um, from something so thin is, is completely unheard of. Yeah. Um, you know, we can coat 3D printed parts, we can coat, a lot of people don't realise that we can coat polymers and plastics, um, we can coat carbon fibre, wood, fibreglass, all types of metals. The only thing that we're sort of limited at is going to be rubber, uh, and that's purely because the blast profile that we've just seen, um, we, we, we can't get that in rubber. It's just, it's purely going to bounce a, bounce bounce, yeah, yeah. yeah, we're not going to be able to give it a mechanical key, but if we could give it a mechanical key, we'd, we'd stick to it. I've made a decision. Black on the, the main body of the rear set and then on the sort of heel, heel plates, we're going to go with the cobalty colour, which is the same colour as what we've got on the engine cases anyway. And I think that looked quite nice together. And if I go for the sort of Nardo grey bodywork, so not the red Ducati bodywork, the Nardo grey bodywork, They'll all be sort of matty and uh, mean looking. There we are, decision made after about 45 minutes. So we've got our Elite Series, we've mixed it at 18 to 1 um, via the density calculator on the website. Uh, and we're just going to strain it. So we've got a 325 mesh strainer, uh, which in UK terms is 44 microns. So it's extremely fine. You can barely see the gauze. And this is the blackout, is it called? So this is E-Series Blackout. It's going to be a very, very popular coating of ours. It's used widely in very extreme environments. Um, so gas and oil are a, are a big, big fan of Elite. Um, we've got over 4,000 salt spray hours, um, which mm -hmm. is like being on the bottom of the seabed. It's pretty insane. <laughs> So with the coating process, the important thing is with the Cerakote is it goes on is it 50 microns, did you say? What so you... yeah, we, we've got a, an average 25 to 50 microns, um, that's sort of generic across our board. The Elite series that we're using here now starts at about 12 microns, um, 12 to 25 microns. So we're again even thinner uh, in terms of nuts, bolts, threads, we can pretty much yeah. coat everything, so no issues. That's, that's the beauty of Cerakote, so you can coat things which you couldn't normally powder because powder is much thicker. So as you say, as someone says, you know, threads, um, you could even do like fork stanchions that um, move up inside. Really. Not necessarily those, um, those are from like a hard chrome, um, people, I think people have done them, it's not yeah. something that we'd recommend, yeah, okay. um, but most, most tight tolerance applications Cerakote's yeah. fine, you know, a lot of mating faces, machine faces, they all seem to be absolutely fine yeah. with Cerakote. Because I did a similar thing with the yolks on the Hyper, if you remember. So the in, normally you'd mask off like the inside where the, yeah. where the tubes, but yeah, exactly. they're so thin you, you don't have to. 
Right, this is it. So we've got to see how we apply it now. The master at work. Oh, are we going to measure it afterwards, Simon, to see how, you, see how good you are? See if you achieve the uh, 30 <laughs> micron coaching. <laughs> we'll give it a go. Well and that's it, is it? Some eagle-eyed uh, viewers might notice is we're spraying a weird way. So rather than spraying your conventional um, vertical fan pattern, um, we're, we're, we're coating the other way. So we're just trying to achieve a nice two to three inch fan pattern, about four, inch, four, four inch away from apart. And we're just trying to get a nice wet bed. Um, a lot of people confuse Serica and they'll do, they'll do it too dry. Um, and they'll almost dust it on. Um, but what we're going to get is we're going to get all of this, especially if it's metallic, we're going to get all of those metallic particles stand up on edge and we're going to get what we call a, a sandpaper effect. It's quite common and it's easy to overcome. Um, but there's it's, you know, a lot of little techniques, but as long as we're seeing this nice wet ring, um, that means we're, we're good to go. Wet ring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no! No! I'm no. glad you stopped No! <laughs> I'll be on Facebook, I did not say that. I did say that, didn't What's I? Your... Oh, Jesus Christ. Really good. You can't beat a wet ring. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that we'd do at this stage is we'd, we'd leave this um, 15 minutes um, ambient air. So outside of the oven, um, everything, we give it consistency. So if I coated 10 parts, uh, I'm going to let all of those parts from the last coated part, let it sit 15 minutes. Again, always coming back to consistency, um, but that's going to mean that when those go in the oven, um, they're all going to then mat off to the same point before they're cured. Um, so our final gloss level um, is going to be the same on each part. And what's be fun, Adam, is we, when you paint these, we can compare how good yours are to the yeah, ones yeah. which... Uh... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and also I've got a good wet ring, I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Rather nice, if I say so myself. Oh, no. um, but we want to be completely on the trigger or completely off the trigger. So all the way on and all the way off. Okay. We, we, we're never in the middle because, right. again, we keep going back to consistency. But if we if we um, feed in the trigger and feed off the trigger, we're naturally going to um, alter our film thickness. So on, off, on, off, every single time. Okay. Nice. Don't be afraid to pull that trigger, that's it. Oh, there, yeah. That's it. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, nice. Perfect. So we're going to pop some pressure on here just to stop the part blowing about. Yeah. Um, but what, what I want you to do is think of each face. So we'll do this face, up, pass, and then just go up and down it like that. Remember your distance. Don't get too close. Um, and if you panic, just let go of the trigger. Lamb chop Cerakote division, I think. I think they might be there. Massive thanks to the Cerakote UK guys for the tour and the overview of the process. I found it really, really interesting. And I think Adam's got a few things to think about for other projects we've got on the boil. So I'm going to get some other bits and bobs painted as well. And uh, But for the next episode of this hybrid motard restoration, I now have all of the parts to assemble the engine. I've got to say a massive thank you to P&H Motorcycles for giving me a discount on all of those Ducati bits. It still cost me about 900 quid for all the parts I need to reassemble the engine, including new piston rings now, but we'll cover that next time. So I'm going to be going up with those parts to Nelly with the casings and we're going to put the engine back together. So the next video will be an engine assembly video when finally we start to make some good progress on the bike. So it's very, very slow, but we will get there. Don't you worry. <laughs> Thanks, guys. See you next time.